Imagine a sweet old lady running a boarding house. Now imagine that same lady burying bodies in her backyard. That was Dorothea Puente. Dorothea Puente, a name that now sends chills down the spine of anyone familiar with her story, was once viewed as nothing more than an ordinary woman. She was seen as a kind-hearted matron running a boarding house, providing a home for those who had nowhere else to go. But the perception of Dorothea as just another friendly face in the neighborhood couldn't have been further from the truth. Dorothea's life was far from ordinary. Raised in an orphanage and later sent to correctional facilities, she had an early life marked by hardship. But it was her first brush with the law as an adult for forging checks that set the stage for the heinous acts she would later commit. She was no stranger to deceptive practices, using her cunning and charm to manipulate those around her. But it was her boarding house operation that would reveal just how deep her deception ran. As the proprietor, Dorothea was responsible for the well-being of her tenants. Yet, she used this position of trust to exploit those who were most vulnerable. Dorothea's crimes were not impulsive acts of violence. They were calculated moves, made with the intention of personal gain. She possessed a unique ability to blend into the background to appear as just another face in the crowd. This allowed her to evade suspicion for years, all while carrying out her sinister deeds under the guise of a caring landlady. However, like all secrets, Dorothea's eventually came to light. As the truth about her life and her crimes began to surface, the world was left in shock. Who could have imagined that a sweet old lady running a boarding house could be capable of such atrocities? But Dorothea's crimes were just beginning. What seemed like a simple case of fraud would soon turn into something much darker. In the 1980s Dorothea opened a boarding house in Sacramento, California. Little did her tenants know they were entering a house of horrors. The boarding house, a large Victorian-style building, was more than just a home. It was a trap. Dorothea Puente, a seemingly kind and caring hostess, had a sinister plan. Her target? The most vulnerable among us. Homeless individuals, the elderly, the mentally ill, those whom society had sadly often overlooked. Dorothea offered them a safe haven, a place to call home, but beneath her warm smile and benevolent offers of shelter lay a chilling, dark intention. The boarding house became her hunting ground, her guests, her prey. And then, it began. Ruth Monroe, one of the tenants, was the first to fall victim to Dorothea's deadly scheme. Aged 61 and in the twilight of her life, Ruth moved into the boarding house seeking solace and companionship. But what she found was a cruel and untimely end. When Ruth's lifeless body was discovered, Dorothea was quick to claim it was suicide. She painted a convincing picture of a troubled woman, burdened by the world, who chose to end her own life. The authorities swayed by Dorothea's persuasive narrative and the lack of hard evidence to the contrary, ruled Ruth's death a suicide. But what they didn't know, what they couldn't have known, was that Dorothea Puente was a master manipulator. A woman who had perfected the art of deceit and was capable of the most heinous acts. Ruth Monroe was not a desperate woman who had taken her own life. She was in fact the first victim of a cold-blooded killer. The boarding house of horrors had claimed its first life, but Ruth Monroe was just the beginning. Dorothea Puente was far from finished. The true extent of her malevolence, the depth of her depravity was yet to be revealed. But Ruth Monroe was just the first. Dorothea Puente was far from finished. One by one Dorothea's tenants began disappearing. But it wasn't until the police came knocking that the horrifying truth came to light. In the mid-80s, a sinister pattern began to emerge from Dorothea Puente's boarding house. Tenants would arrive, stay for a while, and then vanish without a trace. Friends and family members received letters, supposedly from their loved ones, explaining that they'd moved on. But the letters were oddly formal, lacking the personal touch you'd expect, and they all bore the same neat, precise handwriting. The police were initially dismissive. After all, these were individuals who, for various reasons, had fallen through society's cracks. It wasn't uncommon for them to drift in and out of people's lives. But as the number of disappearances grew, so did the suspicions. The turning point came with the disappearance of Alberto Montoya, a man with schizophrenia who was known to social workers and had a loving family. When he stopped attending his regular appointments and his family hadn't heard from him for weeks they raised the alarm. The police decided to pay Dorothea a visit. They were met with a sweet, grandmotherly figure who welcomed them into her home and answered their questions with a smile. Nothing seemed amiss. But a strange odor lingered in the air, an odor that Dorothea explained away as rotten fish. 
Unsatisfied with her answers the police returned the following day with shovels. They began digging in the backyard, and what they discovered was a horror beyond their wildest imaginations. Seven bodies were found, each one a tenant who had mysteriously vanished from Dorothea's boarding house. Dorothea's secret was out, but how had she managed to get away with her crimes for so long? The answer to that question would unravel a web of deceit and manipulation that stretched back years revealing a monster who had hidden in plain sight. Dorothea Puente was a master manipulator. Her web of deceit had fooled everyone around her. In this tangled network of falsehoods and treachery, she managed to continue her heinous crimes undetected, all while maintaining the facade of a sweet elderly lady. It's almost hard to believe, isn't it? An old woman, frail and kind-looking, running a boarding house and yet, beneath that innocent exterior, a heart of pure malice was at work. But this was Dorothea Puente, a woman who had mastered the art of deception, and she played her part to perfection. Dorothea was not only adept at manipulation, but she was also a skilled forger. She would slyly take control of her tenant's social security checks, altering amounts and signatures with a precision that would put professional forgers to shame. This was not just a crime of opportunity, but a well-thought-out scheme, one that allowed her to sustain her deadly operation while remaining under the radar. She was always careful to maintain her friendly demeanor, always ready with a warm smile and a kind word. To those around her, she was just a harmless old woman, trying to make ends meet by running a boarding house. The perfect cover for her dark deeds. But it wasn't just her cunning and forgery skills that allowed Dorothea to operate undetected. She had a unique ability to make people believe in her. She played the part of the sympathetic landlady, the caring friend, the sweet old lady, so convincingly that no one ever suspected her of any wrongdoing. However, as with every web of deceit, there comes a point when the threads start to unravel. Rumors started to circulate, whispers of missing people, unanswered questions and suspicions began to grow. People started to look more closely, to question, to doubt. The once impenetrable web of deceit was starting to show cracks. But the facade was crumbling, Dorothea's reign of terror was coming to an end. The truth was inching closer to the surface and the sweet old lady was about to be unmasked. The web of deceit was about to break apart, revealing the horror hidden beneath. As the trial of Dorothea Puente unfolded, the world watched in horror. The sweet old landlady was a cold-blooded killer. The courtroom was abuzz with anticipation, the air thick with disbelief. This elderly woman, Dorothea Puente, stood accused of unthinkable crimes. The evidence piled high, a mountain of truths that would bring her heinous acts to light. The prosecution presented their case meticulously, leaving no stone unturned. Each piece of evidence stacked against Puente was more damning than the last. Financial records revealed a pattern of fraud, with Puente cashing the social security checks of her deceased tenants. Autopsy reports detailed the grim cause of death, poisoning by prescription drugs. And then, there were the bodies, seven in total, unearthed from the garden of her Sacramento boarding house. The defense tried to paint a picture of a frail, elderly woman manipulated by others, incapable of such monstrous acts. But the evidence was overwhelming, the reality of her crimes too stark to ignore. As the trial progressed, the public recoiled in horror and fascination. The media dubbed it, the trial of the century. The world couldn't believe that an unassuming elderly woman could be capable of such atrocities. But behind the kindly facade, Dorothea Puente was a predator, preying on the vulnerable and the desperate. After a grueling trial the jury delivered their verdict. Dorothea Puente was convicted on three counts of murder. The sentencing was swift and decisive. Life without parole. The sweet old landlady, the cold-blooded killer, would spend her remaining years behind bars. Dorothea Puente was finally behind bars, but the impact of her crimes would linger. The memory of her deeds would cast a long and chilling shadow over the city of Sacramento, a grim reminder of the evil that can lurk behind the most unsuspecting of faces. Dorothea Puente died in prison in 2011, yet her story continues to haunt us. The shadow of her monstrous actions lingers, a dark specter in the annals of true crime, her crimes were so heinous that they've etched themselves into our collective consciousness, a chilling testament to the depths of human depravity. Dorothea's legacy is one of tragedy and loss. The lives she took can never be restored. The families of her victims will forever bear the scars of their loved ones' untimely deaths. And then, there are the victims who were never identified. Their names lost to time, their faces forgotten. They, too, are a part of Dorothea's chilling legacy. Her crimes have also left an indelible mark on the community of Sacramento, 
The boarding house where she committed her atrocities stands as a grim reminder of her reign of terror. It's a haunting monument to the lives she stole, a place where the echoes of her victims' final moments still seem to resonate. Even after her death, Dorothea Puente's story poses many unanswered questions. How could a seemingly harmless elderly woman be capable of such brutality? How did she manage to deceive so many for so long? And perhaps the most haunting question of all, how many victims did she truly have? These questions, left unanswered, add to the eerie legacy of Dorothea Puente. The legacy of Dorothea Puente is a chilling testament to the fact that evil can lurk where we least expect it. It's a sobering reminder that appearances can be deceiving, that the face of a monster can be hidden behind a mask of innocence. Dorothea Puente, the sweet old landlady, was a living nightmare. Her story serves as a chilling reminder that monsters can hide in plain sight. She may be gone, but her legacy lives on, a stark warning from the past that continues to echo in our present. Dorothea Puente's story is one of deception, manipulation, and cold-blooded murder. A chilling narrative that began in a boarding house and ended in a courtroom. A tale of a seemingly harmless landlady who used charm and cunning to exploit the vulnerable, and in the end, took their lives. She wove a web of deceit so intricate that it took years for law enforcement to untangle it. Her victims were the forgotten of society, their disappearances unnoticed until it was too late. The trial of the century ensued, revealing a deadly pattern that shocked the world. Dorothea Puente's legacy is a dark one, a stark reminder of the depths of human depravity. Her story teaches us the importance of vigilance, of caring for the vulnerable in our society, and of never underestimating the potential for evil in those we least suspect. The story of Dorothea Puente is a chilling tale that reminds us that sometimes the most horrifying monsters are the ones who walk among us.